This is Fresh Air. I'm Terry Gross. What legacy is Sarah Palin leaving in the state of Alaska now that she's decided to resign as governor and hand power over to the lieutenant governor, Sean Parnell, on July 26th? My guest, Michael Carey, has been following her for years. He's a columnist for the Anchorage Daily News and its former editorial page editor. He also moderates a weekly program about state politics called Anchorage Edition on Alaska Public Broadcasting. After Palin's surprise speech on Friday, most people were still unsure why she resigned and whether she planned to leave politics or prepare a presidential campaign. She still hasn't said what she sees as her political future or if she even wants one. Yesterday, she said she resigned because of the time and costs of the ethics complaints against her and politically ambitious state legislators who were making it difficult for her to get anything done. Michael Carey, welcome back to Fresh Air. You wrote an op-ed piece that was published in the L.A. Times, and you wrote that the only thing we can be absolutely sure of is this. Palin did not tell the truth when she said she's leaving for the good of Alaskans. She's leaving for her own good. What makes you say that? I think it's demonstrable in the sense that this is a, a, of course, there'll be a new governor and the the actual handoff will be pretty seamless. There are provisions for that, whether at the federal level or our level. But she has decided that uh, essentially I can't do this job anymore. I don't want to do this job anymore. She presented it repeated or a number of times in the text that she's only trying to do what's good for the American people and for the, the Alaskan people. But I think when we find out uh, more and we don't have all the information, we're going to find out that she felt there was some advantage in this for her to leave, whether it was I don't have to be governor anymore, whether it was to go out and make a lot of money, um, whether it was just to stay home. But she presented this as a selfless decision done for others. And I guess uh, just as somebody who's been up here a while and has some opinions and been in the room with her and interviewed her on the radio and a variety of other things, I just don't believe that. She gave two weeks notice like she was, you know, working at the department store or whatever. Sarah Palin resigned during the week that the Todd Purdom Vanity Fair piece about her was published, a very uh, unflattering piece. Todd Purdom wrote this about McCain's campaign team. He said, uh, most made it clear that they suffer a kind of survivor's guilt. They can't quite believe that for two frantic months last fall, they worked their tails off to try to elect as vice president of the United States, someone who by mid-October they believed for certain was nowhere near ready for the job and might never be. I think as as an expert on Alaska politics, probably you were interviewed by a lot of people and spoke to a lot of people during the presidential campaign. Did you have any clue that people in the McCain campaign had become so disillusioned with Sarah Palin? Occasionally you would hear uh, rumblings, but they tended to be more like, I know a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy um, who told me the McCain people were really upset with Sarah Palin because something she said, something she did. There were rumors that she'd had tantrums with the staff. I mean, these things were, I suspect they go on with many candidates, the suggestion being that the candidate is much different in private than she or he is in person. But I was in uh, St. Paul when she was actually nominated and accepted uh, the nomination in that electrifying speech. And for myself, um, I guess I'm going to quote that great authority, Mike Carey, um, I thought the choice was very cynical because she simply wasn't prepared to be president of the United States by any rational definition. Let me quote something Sarah Palin said in her speech, and she was referring to ethics complaints against her, and this seemed to be one of the reasons why she was leaving. She said, every one of the 15 ethics complaints have been dismissed. We have won. It hasn't come cheap. The state has wasted thousands of hours of our time and shelled out some $2 million of your dollars to respond to opposition research, and that's money that's not going to fund teachers or troopers or safer roads. Uh, it's important to remember that most of the money that was spent uh, on ethics complaints uh, was spent on Troopergate, which was a major incident, as you remember, last summer and last fall, involving questions about uh, how her brother-in-law was treated, how she uh, handled the Department of Public Safety. That was not a trivial event. It was very divisive and very expensive and probably was important after a while to get to the bottom of it. I spoke to a former legislator today, former uh, member of the Attorney General's staff, and he explained that many of these ethics complaints 
could have been answered uh, simply by writing a letter back to those who handle ethics matters and say, uh, gentlemen and ladies, uh, this is actually what I did, and respond to the complaint in that fashion without requiring any um, high-priced legal help. Now, perhaps if you have aspirations to be president of the United States, you feel that you need high-priced legal help frequently or all the time, or you're not going to let um, let these things uh, go unanswered professionally. You want a professional in the room when you're answering them. I think there's something I want to add here, and that is really disappointing to those who had so much hope for Sarah Palin when she became governor, is she's really become professional at playing the victim. Somebody's saying terrible things about me. Somebody's saying, saying uh, terrible things about my family. And isn't it terrible? This, this is something you hear from her repeatedly. What condition would you say Sarah Palin leaves the state of Alaska in? Well, there was a story the other day, a national story that said more than half the states uh, in the United States are facing de- deficits. We are not, uh, primarily because the price of oil went back up and is funding uh, most of our our budget in the billions, the low billions. But we also, of course, have a lot of federal spending that's coming in here. Uh, and we've used some reserves from a, something called the Budget Reserve Fund to balance the budget. But w- Sarah Palin did not have to impose on us as happened in other states, new taxes or dramatic cuts in services. Uh, in fact, thanks to the Obama administration, which, of course, she's uh, uh, made mock of from time to time, we received uh, a great deal of stimulus money that's uh, a great help with our budget. Sarah Palin wanted to give back about a third of the stimulus package that was being offered to Alaska. What was the reaction in Alaska when she wanted to give it back? I think at first there was confusion, why do you want to do this? And second, I mean, at the same time, there were some people who supported the governor. I think she was in better shape in public opinion then who may have felt, yeah, well, maybe she's got a point here. Let's see what the government has in mind. And she asserted there were all these uh, strings attached that would prevent us from doing things, quote, in the Alaskan way, unquote. On the other hand... There were many people, including legislators, who said, hey, it's free federal money. Get it? It's free. And uh, some of the cynics said, you know, the uh, Alaskan people have never seen a federal dollar that they didn't like, as we are historically one of the primary recipients of federal money. So um, eventually, I can tell you this from firsthand observation, I was in the legislature in Juneau visiting the state capitol when the state Senate leaders um, held a press conference to talk about the stimulus money, and they weren't nasty, they weren't um, unpleasant, but essentially Senate President Gary Stevens said, the President of the United States has spoken, he's giving out this money, maybe I wouldn't have voted for it if I was a senator, but I think we have an obligation to take all this money and spend it in the best way we can for all Alaskans. And that really was the the essence of the way the legislature felt about it. And probably if they had a veto session today, they're prevented by the mechanics of, of how the legislature works. It would probably be like 55 to 5 in favor of taking the money. <laughs> 